All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome if you're new. Thank you for taking time out of your day to check the video out. We have more PlayStation news, rumors, and leaks to go over and cover today. We're talking about Spider-Man 2, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, and Silent Hill 2 Remake. So before we get into these topics, do me a favor. If you end up enjoying the video or finding it informative, be sure to leave it a like. And if you are new here to the channel, please consider hitting that subscribe button as well. We're starting here with a couple of topics regarding Spider-Man 2. So this is being reported by PlayStation Lifestyle. We're finding out how long the game is going to be roughly, and it turns out it's going to be similar in length to the first game. They say here Insomniac Games has shed some light on Marvel's Spider-Man 2 campaign length on the PS5. While well, the studio didn't offer any hard numbers, it did say that the game's length is similar to Spider-Man PS4. According to How Long to Beat, Spider-Man 1's main story can be beaten within 17 hours. Those who delved into the side missions spent an average of 25.5 hours playing the game, whereas Completionist took an average of 34.5 hours to do everything Spider-Man 1 has to offer. While these numbers are dependent on playstyles, it's safe to say that Spider-Man 2's campaign is roughly around 15 to 18 hours on average. In an interview with GamesIndustry.biz, Insomniac's senior creative director, Brian Intihar, said that the studio did not want to unnecessarily stretch Spider-Man 2's campaign for the sake of making a bigger sequel. It's not like we've doubled the size of the game, Intihar said. We want to do what is right for the vision, the time and attention you need to create that experience, and also take care of our team. He then went on to joke, saying that he would end up with a lot less hair if Insomniac tried to make a 200 hour game. So to me, this actually sounds great. I thought that Insomniac did a really good job with Spider-Man 1 and balancing how long it took to complete the campaign and the story versus how long it would take to complete the side content and how long it would take to actually complete the entire game. They did say that they've worked on improving the side content and making sure that it feels more meaningful and a little bit less repetitive, which I think is good news because that was like one area with Spider-Man 1 that in my opinion, definitely had room for improvement so yeah 35 hours to complete this entire game that sounds perfect to me so let me know what you guys think of that continuing to talk about spider-man and insomniac games i have a, another article here from playstation lifestyle they say insomniac games senior creative director brian intahar has said that things have been better at the studio since it joined sony's playstation family Insomniac had a history of working with PlayStation before being acquired in 2019, with former Sony executive Sean Layden calling the acquisition one of his greatest achievements. Speaking to GamesIndustry.biz, Intahar said that he sometimes forgets Insomniac is part of PlayStation. Sony has been lauded by a number of developers for allowing creative freedom, and Intahar echoed those sentiments. At the end of the day, Sony want the same things we do, Intahar said. They want to make great games and take care of people. When Ted Price, Insomniac's CEO, pulled me into the office to say we were going to be part of PlayStation, I was extremely happy. Although Insomniac has a history of working with PlayStation, it did work with other companies, including Microsoft, on the Xbox exclusive Sunset Overdrive. Since being acquired by PlayStation, the studio has put out a series of critical and commercial hits and they in relatively quick succession. So, yeah, I just wanted to kind of highlight this because we... I feel like we kind of know that PlayStation Studios, their developers seem pretty happy over there. Sony has been able to bring on a lot of development talent and retain a lot of that talent and the results kind of speak for themselves. But it's always interesting to get a little bit more insight and Insomniac, or at least Brian Intihar of Insomniac, is saying that, yeah, the studio got better when they joined PlayStation and that's not surprising to hear. As this article points out at the end here, their output since acqu being acquired by PlayStation is unbelievable. Like, it's actually kind of crazy. So, yeah, something uh, that I just wanted to share with you guys. But the final topic regarding Spider-Man 2 is something we've talked about on the channel, but I didn't actually talk about it in a uh, news video yet. And that is that Spider-Man 2 on PS5 will support ray tracing in every graphics mode. And this was actually uh, revealed through an interview that Insomniac did with IGN. And they say that uh, it has expanded ray traced reflections throughout Spider-Man 2 and wants to make sure that all players get to experience them. Hence, ray tracing is turned on by default. 
we've really figured out how to deliver what we feel like is the right Spider-Man visuals, said Mike Fitzgerald, director of Core Technology. Spider-Man 2's graphics have been tailored to players' preferences. The game can be played in 30, 40, or 60 FPS, and it supports VRR and 120 Hz displays. The foundation for how we decide to render things is we like to have our resolution be dynamic, and then we have a pretty robust temporal anti-aliasing solution that lets us scale that up and down, Fitzgerald continued. We get to leverage the player's preference about how they want to play the game. So once again, Insomniac is proving that they are one of the best studios in the entire gaming industry, and they are raising the bar here, at least with Spider-Man 2 on the PS5. A lot of people were hoping that there would be a 60 fps performance mode a 40 fps performance mode and vrr support and things like that because insomniac has already proven that they do a really good job there but not only are they coming out and confirming that all of this will be there for players in spider-man 2 but ray tracing is going to be turned on the entire time now they do mention their um upscaling their robust temporal anti-aliasing solution as they call it and I have no doubt that the resolution across the board, whether you're playing in 30, 40, or 60 FPS, is going to look very, very good. I do not doubt Insomniac there at all. So the fact that we're going to have that, you know, higher looking resolution or that very nice looking crisp resolution. And then on top of that, we get to choose our frame rate with ray tracing being turned on the entire time. That is, uh, that's pretty awesome. So really have to kind of give it to insomniac games here they they are amazing at what they do truly so there you go those are the updates i have for you for spider-man 2 we're now going to talk briefly about silent hill 2 remake this is being reported by wccf tech the title says silent hill 2 remake may be getting shown soon judging from some recent findings the silent hill 2 remake may be shown again very soon as spotted by reset user werewald the game's Steam page features a Tokyo Game Show 2023 banner, which leads to another page featuring deals meant to celebrate the event, which will be held next week from September 21st to September 24th. Interestingly enough, no other Konami game, with the exception of Yu-Gi-Oh! Master Duel, shows the same banner on its Steam page, suggesting that the highly anticipated remake could be shown during the event. While its absence from the recent state of play and the official Konami TGS 2023 lineup may suggest that the Silent Hill 2 remake is not getting shown next week, Square Enix, for example, did not have Final Fantasy VII Rebirth in its official lineup until the release date trailer launch, so chances are definitely not zero. Everything considered, however, we should head into next week, keeping our expectations in check. Now, obviously, that's this week. Uh, this article was written up a couple of days ago. So there's a little bit of evidence here that Silent Hill 2 Remake might show up at TGS, but at the same time, it's far from confirmation, and there's every chance that it won't show up, and Konami is not even going to be part of TGS. So we do have to take this with a pinch of salt, obviously, and keep our expectations in check. I personally hope Silent Hill 2 Remake shows up because it's been a while since we've seen it. I think a lot of people are eager to get some more news on it or see a little bit more of it hopefully a release date but i think there are also many other games that people are wondering about when it comes to playstation that i think people were expecting them to show up at the state of play and they never did games like stellar blade uh rise of the ronin possibly even death stranding 2 you know these are all games that would make perfect sense to show up at tgs but as of right now, there's no confirmation for any of these games. So I guess what I'll tell you guys is just keep your eyes peeled. We may be getting some news on some of the games I just listed during TGS, but there's always the possibility that we might not get any news on them. So just keep your eyes peeled. We're going to move on to the final topic of the video, though, which talks a little bit about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. This is once again being reported by WCCF Tech. They say yesterday... Square Enix debuted a gorgeous new Final Fantasy VII Rebirth trailer to reveal the game's PS5 launch date, which is February 29th, 2024. However, we also learned that the game will only be exclusive to the PS5 console for three months, per the deal between Sony and Square Enix. That's a much shorter time frame than Final Fantasy VII Remake, exclusive for, which was exclusive for a full year on PlayStation consoles, and Final Fantasy XVI, which is a six-month exclusivity before it releases on PC. They continue by saying, we should stress that it doesn't necessarily mean 
Final Fantasy VII Rebirth will be available on PC the following day. For instance, while the timed exclusivity for Final Fantasy XVI will expire in late 2023, the developers already clarified they'll need more time to prepare the PC version. The same happened with Final Fantasy VII Remake. The first part of the Remake trilogy, which only launched on PC a year and a half after the original debut on PS4, still it's possible that two new Final Fantasy games will be released on PC in 2024. So yeah, we don't have explicit confirmation that Final Fantasy VII Remake is going to release on PC starting in June or something like that. It could happen, but what we can say for certain is that Rebirth will be exclusive to the PS5 console until May 29th at the minimum. And we'll see if that changes. I'll be sure to update you guys if we get any new information. But I also want to let you know it's been confirmed that Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is going to have over 100 hours worth of content. Uh, this is a direct quote from Naoki Hamaguchi, the director of the game. He says, quote, we hope you will explore this world in great detail as nearly 100 hours of adventure await, end quote. So, yeah, I think everybody knew that this game was going to be massive. I mean, it's going to you know ship with two discs and just based off the trailers. But yeah, there's some confirmation that the game is going to be about 100 hours. And I'm, I'm assuming that's for a like 100% completion rate. It would be insane if that's not what that was for. But that's my assumption. So there you go. It's going to be a massive game. But that's going to do it for this video, guys. I hope you did enjoy it. I hope you did find it informative. Again, if you did, be sure to leave it a like. Subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the bell notification icon and feel free to share this video out on top of all that. But until next time, guys. Take care.